I'm Patrick Kamath and I'm a consultant in gastroenterology and hepatology at the Mayo Clinic. Today I'm going to discuss uh, the paper on mesenteric venous thrombosis. And mesenteric venous thrombosis is increasingly recognized nowadays when routine CAT scans are carried out for evaluation of abdominal pain. And mesenteric venous thrombosis needs to be considered any time a patient has abdominal pain which is disproportionate to physical findings. And so if the pain is real and the intensity of the pain is disproportionate to physical findings, one needs to consider ischemia of the bowel. <coughs> ischemia of the bowel can be either arterial or venous. And our paper focuses on mesenteric venous thrombosis. Arterial thrombosis typically has a very acute onset and the pain rises to its peak intensity in seconds to minutes. However, in mesenteric venous thrombosis, the pain is a little more insidious in onset and may take several hours to reach its peak intensity. The venous thrombosis may be in the superior mesenteric vein alone, at which time there would be the risk of small bowel edema and ischemia. You could also get superior mesenteric venous thrombosis in addition to portal vein thrombosis. Portal vein thrombosis alone may not be symptomatic and may be found only routinely on abdominal imaging. When one sees a patient with mesenteric venous thrombosis, the causes are either local in the abdomen and these are readily picked up on a CT scan of the abdomen. One always needs to consider causes of increased clotting and these are hematological diseases and mesenteric venous thrombosis is typically related to the myeloproliferative neoplasms like polycythemia or essential thrombocytosis. The other causes of acquired thrombophilia as well as inherited causes of thrombophilia which one needs to consider. Once a diagnosis of mesenteric venous thrombosis has been made, the most important treatment is anticoagulation. And anticoagulation may need to continue for a period of, of six months if the cause is apparent. However, if no cause is apparent or if there is an acquired or inherited thrombophilia, one may need to consider indefinite anticoagulation. Complications include extensive ischemia of the bowel and if surgery is required, the patient often loses a large segment of the bowel and is prone to develop what we would call uh, small bowel failure or a short gut syndrome where they would require long-term total parenteral nutrition. If the thrombosis progresses, then the patient may develop chronic portal vein thrombosis and the complications here include complications of portal hypertension. So in summary, consider mesenteric venous thrombosis anytime you see a patient with abdominal pain disproportionate to physical findings. A CT scan of the abdomen is probably the best test to be done. If mesenteric venous thrombosis is confirmed, then a thrombophilia screen is required and the treatment should be anticoagulation. And future research will be more towards trying to find out the approximately 25% of patients in whom no cause is determined. And these are very likely related to acquired thrombophilia. And that should be the goal for future research. Thank you. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.